and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. Joining the conversation this week is Eric. Is it really required to say this week? I think we're here every week. You're, you're, you, there were some weeks you were not here. Okay, yes. that is true. That is true. Actually, pretty recently. And we have Tom. I'm only here physically. I'm not here mentally. Okay. I am half and half, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I found out yesterday, like, I was out of coffee. And then I went to the grocery store to pick up something to, for dinner and forgot to get coffee. So oh, I had I one it. cup of leftover from, like, what was in the pot from yesterday. And that's all I've had for coffee. So, like, I'm I'm kind of, ugh. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I had a lot of and coffee. And I did didn't There's get great thing sleep. I have in my household that's just an outlandish amount of caffeine. That is that is my preparation. So I've got oh. two things of, fr- of not frozen, two things of freeze dried coffee in there. Uh, one big ass bag of single serving cream sugar coffee mixture packets. I've got monster energy drinks, an ungodly amount of Coke, uh, at least three pounds of coffee beans, and then whatever is in the hopper. Um, yeah, and I think that's a hopper. Hopper. Oh, and and I think of Folgers as my emergency fresh coffee. So I have caffeine. Like I still have a thing of zip fizz. Like I, I keep zip fizz around the house. So I, I took an emergency zip fizz. But like I realized by about like four o'clock, I'm sitting on the couch. I'm actually starting to doze off a little. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. So usually on, on the weekends, I will go to bed anywhere from four to five AM. Um, last night I went to bed at two o'clock. It was crazy. <laughs> I was just sitting there. I was playing games. I'm like, I'm a little tired. I could force myself to keep playing this or I could just go to bed and get up early tomorrow. So I went to bed and I still got up at noon today. <laughs> yeah. I was wanting to play some, uh, Phasma with you guys last night. Um, and we'll get into what you guys were doing in a little bit. Cause it's pretty fun, but, um, I'm like, yeah, finally got done doing a little bit of um, other stuff. Now I'll go play some Phasmo. Played one match, and I found myself kind of like almost falling asleep when we were waiting to do something. I'm like, yeah, this isn't happening for me tonight. <laughs> yeah. I had the same sort of thing. I went to bed super early. Well, I went to – I technically went to bed about 9 o'clock, but then I watched um, the Shawshank Redemption. Oh, while laying wow. in bed and then I went to sleep. So I, I was probably asleep by like 11. It's that not a movie where you can turn that off halfway either. I actually fell asleep during and finished it up like right before the podcast to watch the rest of it. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you can as it turns out. You can out. actually. It's technically possible. I've never seen the movie. You really need, need to watch to. it. Yeah, it's it really excellent. It's really good. It's uh, it's one of those rare movies where I can just say, just go see it to anyone without yeah, any kind of yeah. qualifications. Yeah, it's just Not like, like a really... oh yeah, if you like superhero movies, do you, you know watch this one. This is hey, Shawshank Redemption. If you are a human, it is a fantastic. If you're a human, movie. you probably will enjoy it at least to some extent. It's got a yeah, little bit of everything. Stephen... That's Stephen King, right? Yeah, but it does not. Seem it's not like at all. No, it's like... not not horror. <laughs> if I didn't know that I mean, it was Stephen I King and somebody was telling me for the first time, did you know Shawshank Redemption was Stephen King? I would have been like, ah, I'm going to need to fat check that. I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, lo and behold. Oh, my God. Be. Why am I so <laughs> bad? <laughs> I shut. <Yeet. laughs> yeah, I watched um, the live action Lion King finally. Oh, oh. how was that? Actually, not bad. There's a few songs they couldn't do the same way. That it, it's They try to be shot for shot on this one. But there's a few yeah. songs they just couldn't do because they're doing realistic animals. So you can't have like an animal pyramid and Simba sliding down the neck of a giraffe when you're doing Why? realistic animals. You could. Or the, or the hyenas doing the Nazi march. I mean, it just doesn't work with realism. <laughs> Why not? But... um it was still really good. Be Prepared was a little bit of a letdown because the original one was such a badass song because of the March of the Hyenas. Which one is but other than prepared? that, um, when Scar's singing to the Hyenas to get him to help kill Mufasa. Yeah. Be prepared. 
Anyway, yeah, I don't think um, I remember that it, one. It's it's pretty solid. It's but either way, the movie the movie was good. Um, they did some call outs to other Disney movies that weren't in the original Lion King. So I, I it was well done. It's not their best live action. Like Jungle Book, hands down for me, is like their best live action. This that is going to sound no. weird. I loved Beauty and the Beast live action. I really did. No, but it was like, good. Gaston is my fucking man. Also, you can't go wrong with Emma Watson. She's just a fucking tour de force in everything she does. And I, I enjoyed Beauty and the Beast. I just thought Jungle Book was just stellar. I'm going to have to watch that then. I was never a huge fan of the cartoon version, but yeah, it was it was there. It's different than the cartoon version. It's okay. closer it's closer to the book. So, yeah, closer to okay. the 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 Jungle Book. Yeah. What's that closer book to called the again? Jungle Book book? The book that the Jungle yeah. Book is based the off the of? Jungle Book book. The Jungle Book. Yeah. Book. And I until I was reading that as a kid, I never realized that's where Ricky Tiki Taffy came from. Like there's a Ricky secondary Tiki story Taffy? in Taffy. You don't, Tavi? Is it uh, Ricky Tiki Tavi? It's, it's Tavi. Do you not know the Tavi? But you know I, who I'm talking about, right? I'm just, I'm just I now, now. I just it, thinking it's a, of Laffy Taffy. It's a mongoose. Now. It's yeah. a mongoose that uh, kills rat, uh, rattlesnake or uh, king cobra. Sorry. It. You guys honestly never heard that. Um, I mean, maybe once that, a long time that, that, ago. I remember sounds, nothing about the Jungle Book at all. Oh, it wasn't in the Jungle Book. I'm just oh. like there's other stories like that was in the book. Oh, oh, oh. But yeah, either way. I know the um, title. I know the name. I don't know anything else. I know there's a bear. Anyway, a bear. Blue. Yeah, a bear. <laughs> oh, um, Bears. the live action has um, Christopher Watkins in it, which is great. And he nice. sings. Christopher Walken. It's awesome. Sing. Oh, is he a good singer? Yeah, it worked really well because of the character <laughs> they gave him. So, um, you know what the worst feeling in the world is? What's that? You're on Hulu. You're catching up on some Bob's Burgers. You get done with the episode and it says, hey, would you like to start this other series? Which means, motherfucker, you're out of Bob's Burgers. Yes. It's the worst feeling in the world. Had that this weekend. Or I guess yesterday. Love that show. It's so good. It has no right being as good as it is. No right. It has every right being as good as it is. I love that show. So I haven't brought this up to Gina yet. I've got like two different cookbooks. And what I'm wanting to do is like every other week, we randomly choose something out of it. Because one of the cookbooks is Binging with Babish. It's his first. It's Oh, you bought it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to just like kind of a random number generator. Okay, we're making this this week. But the other cookbook I I got is Bob's Burgers. And at (laughs) the time of its print, it had every burger of the day ever in the episode. Oh my wow. god! What? So, so what if you what if you do that and then you land on something that requires like some exotic ingredient that's way too expensive and hard to hard to get? Um, or are most so of the recipes Bob, pretty like babishes were all pretty like accessible. Like I might be something expensive, but it's accessible. Um, Bob's Burgers. The only thing I know of for any of his that were really kind of niche was um, it all on black garlic yep exactly the black garlic you can make black it, garlic and that's probably what i'd have to do i think I, it's I guess, easy actually oh i'm pretty sure it's really easy it just takes some time because i think you oh. essentially let it ferment a little bit or something but yeah i, I want to try doing that sometime just because i think it'd be fun and i haven't actually made like a burger at home in so fucking long I know. I can't remember the last time I made a burger. I um been playing around with my sous vide a little more. Um, so now I figured out how to actually get good flavor out of sous vide. So when I vac seal it to sous vide it, I'm putting in minced garlic, thyme, and then I'm ch- uh, slicing up some butter and throwing butter on both sides of the steak, vac sealing that butter onto the steak, and then dipping it in the bat. Okay. Yes. So it's yeah. actually cooking in the sous vide with butter vac sealed around it. God. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> butter, garlic, and thyme. Oh, it's so good. Mm. I'm gonna buy a sous vide. I'm gonna buy a sous vide right fucking now. And this time, so you, the la- last last time I did it, I did it with fillets, just because, like, okay, I'm gonna do this right once. 
oh my god mm. best i've ever made however i did this with sirloins this time so like i did cheap cut steak yeah this solid. turned out pretty damn good it's a little i mean it's chewier because i mean it's a sirloin but it was pretty fucking good nice no buying things no 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 this is something you need like you guys are on the instant pot thing that's one of the great things to have a uh, pressure cooker gotta I, get a I've wanted a sous vide for a year i'm buying a sous vide like gotta tonight. get a sous vide it's happening it's wait happening. till black wait till cyber monday there's gonna be sales no no i'm gonna i'm gonna get it on delivery and i'm gonna make steaks tomorrow with it that's what's happening <laughs> and um well in that case tom you need to get a vac sealer too <laughs> yeah yeah i've got to get a vac sealer i need a sous vide i need a bucket i need steaks I need thyme and garlic. And, and just think, once butter. you get the vac dealer, you can start buying like 20 chicken breasts at a time. No, then just fill them up the, with them. You're just trying we to give him ideas, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. Like we, there is I'm one trying to make part, Renee hate me. Yeah, there's one part. Oh, no, you don't have to try. Um, <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> she already hates you. Uh, she already one, uh, one thing that uh, we're wow. absolutely cannot do uh, or absolutely limited with and that's freezer space like we've wanted a big ass stand-up freezer for a while but we just don't have the room for it yeah uh well anyway anyone else have anything exciting happen this week um i i have something that i haven't tried yet so uh this is technically a teaser oh. so y'all have had easy mac right it's yeah. easy mac. it's no, yeah, it's no. not it's not amazing. It's not great. But it's, it's not it is great, mac and but... cheese. And when you need mac and cheese, sometimes you gotta you gotta well, you know get by with what you have. I don't know why you would pick macaroni and cheese when you can have ramen noodle and cheese. This is Maruchin cheddar cheese flavored ramen. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. Look at that shit. Maruchin cheddar cheese why? flavor. And it's that's they don't they weird. Can't okay. Call it cheese. Now, it's just cheese flavored dust. Now, I want to call this out for audio listeners. This is not the square pack. This is uh, Marachin cups where you add a specific no. amount of boiling water. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it does cook. So, uh, I am going to try this soon. Not right now. Probably not tonight, but soon. And I will let you all know how it turns out. <laughs> So I've gotten That's to the fantastic. point with my ramen, I don't I don't use their packets anymore. Like I've been talking to Adam about this. I have like a spice mix that I just kind of put in. Like I don't use anything they give except for the noodles. Nice. But yeah, it's coming out pretty nice. Anyway. That's beautiful. That's you know bullshit. they have uh um, do you know they have Cheetos mac and cheese now? What? What? <laughs> like <laughs> like in the box, like <laughs> box mac and cheese. Instead of craft, you can buy Cheetos. Mac and cheese, hmm. and they have. I don't know on. that I. Re uh, I don't know that yeah. I really like Cheetos cheese outside of it being on Cheetos. Agreed. I don't know. Um, I mean, that's a thing. You can get the flaming hot version too, and the jalapeno. Okay, cheddar. now we're talking. Ooh, flaming hot oh, mac and, and cheese. Oh, did you guys know Taco Bell has a new chalupa? What? No. It's it's no, like a. Uh, it's like a cheese crusted chalupa. It there is, is no way, delicious. There is no way I can get Taco Bell where I'm at right now. The one next to me closed. Oh, no. I've been Taco Bell list for basically the whole year. That's tragic. Mm -hmm. That sucks. I need Taco it's Bell. Really, it's really good. It, it, it's a solid improvement on a Chalupa, which is already possibly the best taco-based item they have. Yeah, Cheesy Gordita Crunch would like a word with you. <laughs> I... I, I I, I prefer chalupas over cheesy gordita crunch. I, the, well, the, you, the sir, shell, are wrong. The, the shell of the chalupa is just great. You have crunch. You have soft. It's you got greasy. it all in that thing. Too greasy. greasy. You get crunch and soft in the cheesy Bell. gordita the crunch. Get out of here. No, it's, it's, all, no, it's too much. That's it gets it. all over your fingers. It's no. What the f I've never had a greasy shell of a chalupa. I don't know. My fingers will feel greasy afterwards if I eat one of those. You greasy bastard. But no, um, Cheesy Gordita Crunch, though, is good. I, I enjoy that. It's not that I don't enjoy those. I just like Chalupa a little better. But yeah, new Chalupa, solid. Hmm. But games, guys, games. No. No? Okay. No games. So no games. 
This podcast is all about cheddar cheese flavored items. Well, um, what's how your about favorite them? cheddar cheese flavored item? Uh, probably the crisp, uh, the crisped up um, cheese circles that Babish puts on his burgers. I have had one in a restaurant, and that shit is legit. Let me tell you, you get a little bit of crunch on that like juicy, big ass burger with all the cheese flavor. Oh, oh my god! Do you put like? Am I allowed? Do to... you do you also put regular cheese on the burger or just the crisp? No, just the crisp. See, I feel like it's... that. I, I like the gooiness of the cheese on a burger. Yes, I think yes. it's a must. A must it's... for the texture, and that's also why your cheese needs to actually be a decently thick slice too, not just like this yeah. little single serve stuff. Like a decent amount, so you can still feel the goo. Yeah, and I I do have to say, like I always get cheddar on a burger, especially if it's with bacon. There's something about it that just works perfectly. But if I'm gonna have just meat cheese burger, um, it's gotta Pepper be American. Jack. There is Pepper something Jack. about the American. gooey, shitty, not really cheese American cheese that just makes a burger. Yeah, like I American cheddar. and cheddar on the same would be perfect because you get the Ooh. like the meltiness of the American cheese, but then you still get the good cheddar flavor. The only thing I don't like yeah. about cheddar on a burger is that it doesn't melt as like the melting, the melted texture isn't as nice. It's a little yeah. rubbery almost. Yeah. Can I just say my favorite cheddar products just straight up cheddar? Like I will cut a chunk off a block and just eat that. Oh shit. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like, uh, Renee like was cheddar. actually surprised. She had never heard of uh, cheese goblining, where it's like what? three in the morning, you're half drunk, you grab a oh, bag of cheese cheddar from the fridge, <laughs> and you just cheese goblin in front of an open fucking fridge. <laughs> and then and you you uh, put it best because I've lived this life. You said bag, meaning shred. Yeah. You're grabbing a yeah. handful of shreds and just throwing them into your gullet. Damn fucking right. I haven't I, done that in years, but I've absolutely done that. Yeah, I don't buy shredded cheese, so I don't ever do I have that. Skyline. Skyline is my jam, and yeah, it's, I'm all about that shredded cheese life. I'll definitely eat cheese by itself, though, like a slice of cheese or, or a block of cheese or whatever. It's a you see. fantastic snack. Tom talking about cheese gobbling makes me think of like ready whip and then just putting ready whip straight into your mouth. Hell yeah. yes. I've seen people where like they'll um, ready, uh, put some chocolate syrup in their mouth and then ready whip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I had, I had some lazy friends in college. <laughs> There's a the cup right there. the laziest dessert you could have. <laughs> is it technically a dessert? Or is that I just mean, like... Good. It's a dessert. <laughs> I, I can't uh, can't disagree with that. That's like a depression dessert. Yeah. I have no. I don't have enough energy to even do anything. Just just <laughs> squirted. Just straight from the fridge. No utensils. No plates. No preparation. No. No, no anything. Just just. <sighs> yep. Straight to the mouth. Ah, uh, that's good shit. But hey, I played Dota this week, fellas. I'm, I'm sorry. So I, sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm so in rip sorry. I have slipped back and I think I am hooked back in again. Oh no. I was able to play games four nights this week. I played um Dota three of those and then I played a lot today. Like I thought, legit Dota, not Underlords. I thought you were gonna play Tarkov with us today and you're like, No, I'm just coming in to say hi, I'm gonna play Dota and I was like, Oh no. It's got him again. <laughs> I, I'm back in it, man. <laughs> the lot I had a slight like taster teaser about six, seven months ago, but the last time I played Dota like this was about 2015. Yeah. So it's been a while. So I, I am gonna say. So I've I've also been playing Dota, mostly with you. Actually only with you. I have not played it alone. Um I fucking hate Dota. I loathe the shit out of that game. It is the worst <laughs> fucking game with the worst community I have ever played in my entire life, bar none, not an exaggeration. Fuck everything about Dota 2. Uh, so after this, I'm thinking about getting a party together and uh, running a few rounds if you guys are up for it. <laughs> no, um, I am so definitely I not up for it. <laughs> I actually did. That's going to be a no for me, dog. 
<laughs> I don't know if Tom was in the game, but there were like some fucking shit birds today. Oh my god, it was so fucking bad. But um, I've actually ran to a couple good or a couple cool guys with it. Oh man, that would have been dirty. Um, yeah, what a so Dire Tide's going on right now, which is a special holiday event. And that game mode is super fun. It's, it's kind of super, cool. It's super fast-paced. People tend to not care too much. Every once in a while, I find a guy that's like super try-hardy. But it'd be like a guy being super try-hardy and spike rush. Yeah, like, come on. <laughs> but yeah, it's super fast. You get to play around with different heroes. It's, it's a good time. Oh my God, I'm But so sorry. actual Dota, sorry. nothing's changed. It's the same fucking game it's always been. It's just fun to get back. We They've added a... Actually, there is something they've implemented since the last time I played. They now... They used to have a team system, which didn't have anything with it. It was just, hey, you're a team, so we recognize you as a team. Now they have what they call a guild. And you get guild points. And, like, your banner and stuff for your guild actually shows up on the game map if you're playing it's with guild members. Pretty cool. So, so we've got, got a 72 pin connector logo like on the ground and on some of the flags around the match on our side. That's pretty cool. And like the, <laughs> the opponents can see it too. So that's really fun. That's awesome. And guild members, there's like guild challenges where as long as three members of the guild are in a match, it counts for the challenges. So there's a lot of really fun stuff they're doing around guilds. And you can have up to 50 people in a guild. So it's not just like you have a single team that can play. Like you can have 10 up to actually math this eric you can have probably somewhere up around um 15 different teams going at once getting your stuff so it's really fun how they did it it's, it's a really good implementation uh i don't think there's actual ranks with the teams like competitive ranks but they rank you on how your points you're getting which is kind of fun but yeah that's all i wanted to say i got back into dota and i'm enjoying it i I don't know how to say this exactly. <laughs> I have been immersed in Dota. I can't say that I'm enjoying when I play it, but God, but is damn, it does it really suck me in? Is it rewarding though? When we win or when some cool, stupid shit happens, absolutely. Like uh, there were, there's always these moments in the game where you're like. Okay, how the fuck did I get away? How the fuck did I not die there? I just did some bullshit to somebody and escaped, and there was no reason I had to live. Um, and then it feels like, you know, that happens once a game. And then four times a game, you're battling people, and that's all they do is get out of get out of your grasp and avoid dying. I'm going to score. It, uh, I missed. <laughs> it's a game of moments. Yeah, like very rarely are you in a game where you did not have a single good moment. That doesn't happen yeah. often. And when those games happen, they typically end really fast because you're getting pub stomped. Yeah. The thing, the, the thing that I overwhelmingly dislike about Dota, and this isn't really something they can fix. It's just endemic to the whole game. Um, is that it is truly a team-based game, and if. If, you know, one to, I'm going to say even one and a half of your players is having a slightly off time compared to the other team who's not, you're fucked. Like, that's it. It's hard. It depends. Some hero choices can counter that a little bit. If so, like there's characters that are known as like late game carries. And if you're got, if your team's sucking, but you can make it the game last long enough, your late game carry might be able to come up and win it for you. But you have to just survive. You're not even trying to win and do good. At that point, you're just trying to survive long enough. You're just running which out of clock. Which is a really weird way to play, but it can work sometimes. Yeah. So, like, I was I was playing one of those late game characters. I just never came online. I kept getting killed. I didn't get enough farm. I didn't buy the right items. I didn't steal the right things at the right times. And they just took advantage of it and slapped me down time after time. So at the end of the game, uh, yeah, we lost pretty fucking decisively because I couldn't pull a win out of my hat. And that's just one person, right? That was just me being bad at the game. Everyone else was great. But yeah, that's, it's, that's Dota. It's actually part of why I like it, though. I love team plays. Like in Rocket League, one of my favorite things is getting a really sweet pass. Yeah. So like, I, I love incorporating team plays. And that's also why I play more of a support character. 
is so, I can set things up for others. And the, and I'm sure yeah. the enjoyment of a game like that is only when you're actually partied up with people you know and can cooperate with. It like, makes especially, it especially from what I hear from what you guys say about the community and stuff. Like I'm sure oh. that you don't like just trying to solo queue and then get that feeling that you enjoy with the team plays, Eric, is probably much, much harder. It's it's harder to say, but I will say this: like in Rocket League, like when you get higher level play, like people get used to passing and stuff. The way the Dota heroes play out, team plays are endemic to the way the game plays. So you don't really have to go out of your way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just when you're in a party, you can do it better and do it more. But they can still happen in uh, fully public random lobbies. It's just not as often. I have had really good experience in public lobbies before. Um, It's extremely rare, but I have had very good experiences with people communicating really well or in voice chat all the time or just like those i i would actually make it comparable or say it's comparable to um publicly queuing rainbow six siege right like most of the time yeah it's a goddamn shit show but occasionally (laughs) you get those people who are you just work really really fucking well with and everything just clicks into place perfectly and you pull off some insane bullshit um Dota's definitely in that same line. That's and fair. we're to the point where we only have, I think, five of us in the guild. So we only really have five people to play, and we've yet to run a five stack. Yeah. So it's to the point where if we run into a really cool guy that actually plays pretty well, that's how you expand your community. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be what we have to do if we really want to start playing this a little more is to get some more people that play. Because we just don't have the base. Yeah. Is, is this the return Our, uh, of Team Overly Nice? I was about to Effectively. say. But I'm it's... actually really, really scared what happens when we five stack because uh, one of the one of the last games Team Overlay Nice had, we played in the five stack, we got into the lobby, and the entire other team was just rows and rows of Chinese characters. I have never been stomped that fucking hard in my <laughs> entire goddamn life. Chinese what Dota you... is best Dota, clearly. <laughs> and what hurts us a lot is um, so Tom and I aren't great at the game. We enjoy the game. We're not great at the Ooh. game. Scott was actually Scott's pretty fucking good at the game. Good. And his rank is up there as if he is good. So I think you understand what that means for matchmaking. So uh, we're, we get a very wide range of skill level. Yeah. And a lot of the times it is not in our favor. Yeah. Like I got reported today for not doing good. I made fun of the guy in chat. I'm like, I'm glad sucking is a reportable offense, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, like it, we had some of that. That that's Shit, awesome. I didn't pick. I I am gonna say though that Dota's community is a little bit better than League's from what I've seen. I cannot believe I'm saying that. Um, in mm. League, I didn't pick the right skill at the right time. I got reported for trolling. Wow. Due to my report, I had like uh, I think a like timer on my matchmaking. <laughs> and r- Dota reporting is important because yeah. um, they, when you get reported, you get put into a shit bag tier, and you get yep. you get matched with other shit bird players. So typically, like you'll see one or two guys that complain, but as long as you report them and you ignore it or get rid of them, it really helps your queuing to only have more high quality players and high quality yeah. meaning not assholes yeah they're not necessarily good they're just not dick bags <laughs> yeah we, we've we, there's a lot of ways for us to say the same thing <laughs> they're not phallus satchels they're ignorant so, she is saying that uh league doesn't do anything when you report well that seems like a waste I'm of sure a they good do report s- something Oh, the only thing that gets people banned they might look is at it and be like, nah. or saying something racist or homophobic. Well, yeah, like uh, Dota's not banning you. They're just like putting you in a bad tier of players. Yeah. Uh, Which I appreciate. Like, I don't think someone should be banned for talking trash, but at the same no. time, put them with other fuckers that are going to talk trash. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, th- I think I think we pretty much beat this horse. Fuck Dota. Yeah. yeah. You know so what Tom. it's all about? It's all about aim lab. I'm forcing... Yeah, there you go. What? <laughs> so uh, I downloaded aim lab. I decided to try to grind a little bit of Counter-Strike, trying to play with intention. 
Um, like I, I did this with Rocket League, um, you know, starting probably early this year, where I decided not to just dick around in Rocket League. I was actually going to try to make plays and get better and work on certain mechanics while playing casual games. Um, and I wouldn't do that with CS, but the big thing I kept running into is, Jesus, I can't hit anyone. I'm so bad at pointing a gun at people's faces. Dude, I'm dude, just click bad. heads. Click heads, win just games. Cl just click on their yeah. head. I don't know. I don't understand. And, uh, and apparently I'm bad head. at clicking heads. So uh, I downloaded Aim Lab. Uh, it's on Steam. It's free. It's early access. And uh, honestly, it's kind of kind of cool. I learned that uh, when aiming on the lower half of my screen, I'm way slower at reaction. And I'm way less accurate when aiming towards things off to the right of my screen, basically behind my gun. So if I put my gun on the left, I'm going to actually end up with slightly better performance than just leaving it at the default. Um, mm -hmm. It's really cool. It does like that kind of analysis. The big issue I have with Aim Lab is that it's trying to be a super general purpose tool. Um, so they have a drop down of games you can select. Um, like CS is one of them, Halo, Tarkov, uh, various games that from what I can tell, the only thing that it's doing when you select these different games is just changing like the sensitivity numbers. So it lines up with the, with the actual game oh, in their menu. I see. So you can make sure they're lined up. That, that one's weird. Used, that one, that one is weird for Tarkov because yeah, that all changes depending on what equipment you're running in Tarkov, but exactly. And you do have the option to make custom guns that have like different FOV sliders, depending on what you're using and how you're aiming down the site, different sensitivities. Like you can get, really in depth um the issue i have is that i want an easy button i want to say hey i want to use this gun in counter-strike and have a full oh you're trying to get better at cs profile because right now it's pretty generic it's a uh, hey you try to click on these heads and you didn't do it quite right you should do this but what i really want is um without having to do it myself i want to say okay, I'm going to run this AK or this golly with this particular spread pattern, this particular recoil method, and get better at the actual guns in CS. Um, and while you can get that sort of in the workshop with other people's custom weapons, there's no real easy button that just says, I'm practicing CS, please give. Yeah. And that's probably part of the early access. And it's free. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, for sure. I, that would be... An that would be an easy pro tier thing is like, hey, oh, dude, pay four bucks or five bucks, get the CSGO gun pack. Exactly. I would, I would like right fucking now throw them five bucks if I could, you know, practice with maybe not CS models, but something that looks like them or different map spots that emulate CS maps or especially even just the guns. Um, I would pay for that in a fucking heartbeat. And that's, that's what I think they're going to get to. Uh, but it's just not there yet, which is kind of disappointing. Um, I will say, though, knowing knowing my weaknesses, just even on a general level, without all the, the CS-specific gun stuff, is pretty helpful. Um, I now know when, you know, clearing a room or going into a, a, a building or a blind corner, how to angle my screen, how to angle my gun so I don't hit my weak zones, which is kind of kind of cool, honestly. That is neat, yeah. They have graphs, too. Like, they can show your your progress. There's a so lot of... I... There's a lot of... Go ahead. Go ahead. There's a Go lot ahead. of little stuff I didn't realize um, until probably the last year or so. Like, just how many intricacies there are in first-person shooters, and not just the shooting mechanics, but, like, things like crosshair placement, um, mm -hmm. things how, like, field of view and angles work. Um, like, if you're, if you're peeking out of cover... It's best to be as far away distance wise from the cover because if you're right close to the corner, you're going to like start to expose your body before you can see around the corner. Um, yeah. Based on the angles Slides and, and, and visions and stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of little things like that I didn't know about before. And it seems like, especially what you're talking about with like the, your weak zones and stuff, this is like another layer of extra information and, and stuff you can apply to your, your game. Yeah. And I, I yeah, will I say, believe it or not, Pavlov has helped me play Counter-Strike better. Um, it's kind of weird. Like, so I've literally been playing these maps since 1998, but I never recognized some of the blind corners or some of the ledges until I was physically standing on top of them. 
-hmm. And then when I went back and I played CS, I was like, oh, okay, well, they're going to show up here. I remembered in Pavlov, I literally walked across this ledge, physically walked across this ledge. Oh, look, I can do it here too. Okay, cool. Um, but it gives you a really different sense of map knowledge when you're physically present in those maps, which is kind of neat. Yeah. But I just wish I would have known about uh, Aim Lab when I was doing Rainbow. If it, I don't know if it was around at that point, because at that point I was using Osu as a warm up. Yeah. <laughs> which actually worked pretty well. Yeah, it's not a bad but, choice. But it doesn't have the get better mechanics for shooters. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Because, I mean, most of the shooters have ways of practicing that stuff anyway. Like yeah, Rainbow Six has the um, like the terrorist hunt mode. And I, I think there aren't Ooh. there like mod packs and stuff you can install for CS that have like aim trainers and stuff in them. Yeah, there's there's a lot of workshop maps that have stuff like that in it. Uh, I actually saw one with the, the Blast Premiere um, tournament recently. Uh, where a part of their like between match halftime things was showing these various pros going through one of these training maps, one of which filled the arena with smoke and they had to use audio only to shoot people, uh, which was pretty cool, but they That's ran nice. through and tried to get high scores. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's definitely ways to do that with just straight up CS, but I wanted it all in like one aim lab package because it does a lot of cool stuff with uh, machine learning. So if it knows that, hey, you're on the left or you're weak on your left side, you should, or you're weak on your right side, you should practice this area. It'll take all of your cumulative scores into account. And then when you're going through the training, it will dynamically adjust difficulty, placement, distance, recoil, all these other things to give you a training pack that will help you improve on those weak spots. Uh, you can even select, okay, I want to be faster or I want to be more accurate. And then it will shift to the balance of what happens during those training packs uh, to help you practice those things. It's a pretty cool package. Like, I have some complaints with it, but honestly, it's free and it's this good already? Yeah, it's it's probably worth your time to download it. I'm going to have to download that for sure. Yeah, I, I probably will. Like, I, when we was doing Rainbow, I was actually trying to get good. Mm -hmm. I was spending time trying to get good. And I... Tarkov, I play Tarkov as a shooter now, but I feel Tarkov, yes, shooting mechanics are super important. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other things that are super important to Tarkov that are absolutely nothing to do with shooting. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's definitely more of a focus in Siege. Although, um, from what I understand, I haven't played Siege much lately. But like over time, the game has become less and less focused on your gun skill and more and more focused oh. on... like Because so many operators have so many like gadgets and utility and stuff now. A whole lot of like the kind of meta, I guess probably more in high level play is is dealing with the utility is more important than actually being good at shooting. Yeah. I'm actually kind of running way. into that with Counter-Strike too. Like, don't get me wrong. 98% of Counter-Strike is positioning and shooting, right? Really simple FPS stuff. But I've learned that because I'm not so great at the shooting, what I can do is load myself up with all kinds of different grenades. So smoke grenades here to block the sight line. I know these guys are going to rush this area, so I'm going to throw a Molotov to cut off this path. Um, and it's really neat to feel slightly effective, even though I can't click heads as good as some of my teammates. Hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah. can see that. I, I don't think it'll ever be non-shooting for CS. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I can absolutely see that being like, hey, I can be effective while whenever I get in a gunfight, I instantly die. Yeah. Because that's me. I'm garbage at CS. Like, that is hands down the worst shooter I've ever played. Like, for not the yeah, game. The shooter, the like, shooter you're at worst the game. at. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. It's hands down Counter Strike. Yeah. I, I don't want to say I'm good, but I generally fit into the middle of the leaderboard most games. Um, and that's that's something I'm actually kind of proud of. I'm not terrible. <laughs> I'm just average. Look at me, everybody. I'm okay. I wish you I was there, because I also I also don't understand the buy meta. Like I know, like this round you buy this, this round you buy that. I, I don't so, know that shit. Yeah, in in casual, honestly, that doesn't come into play too too much. Um, because you you get armor automatically. Um. 
you know, it's it's even like CSGO is even less important uh, for economy than CS 1.6 was because literally they had a mechanic where you had to buy each individual mag, your sidearm mags and your primary mags. So if you wanted to go in without any bullets in your sidearm, you can and you'll save a couple hundred bucks and that adds up over the course of a, a full round or a full game. And Dobby also points out that CS is more map knowledge than just plain shooting. 100 fucking percent. Absolutely. If you know the maps in CS, which, I mean, if you've been playing since 1998, you've roughly internalized the maps. Um, what? But, I mean, it's like, I know, I know those exactly maps. Really map yeah. <laughs> I, though I, say, though, that I think every shooter is just comes down to map knowledge. I mean, that's the differentiator in Siege is, oh, do you sure. know House better than other people? Oh, dude, Siege, I think map knowledge is, especially for defenders, Siege is I a, think map knowledge is huge. Siege is uh, kind of an outlier in that, that you can shoot through a, a pretty large margin of the walls. So, like, not yes. only do you need to know how to navigate the map, you need to know where where you're vulnerable beyond just doorways and windows yes it's like if he doesn't come through this doorway he can still kill you with a gun don't mm -hmm. don't be resting easy and then on top of that you have all of the the different operators and gadgets and how they interact with each other to learn to yeah fucking maverick gonna peek a hole through wall <laughs> out of nowhere and just pop you i i am gonna say um i think uh, Rainbow Six Siege is not a first-person shooter. It is a real estate training device, a uh, real estate agent training device that happens to have guns in it. <laughs> it's all about those floor plans, man. That's Awful. it. Awful tick. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, Zero out of ten. So um, I see you've also been back to something you were playing earlier. Um, so Splunky 2, difference in opinion yet? Or you still feel, why is it a new game? Yeah, I still mostly feel wise in the new game. That said, I'm just fucking hot garbage at it. Jesus Christ, I can't get anywhere in that game, and I'm so bad. And I, I think it's because I'm just not patient enough for this game. Um, so yeah, that I, always I feel bad. that's that's always the issue with people in games like Splunky. Yeah, is if you try to push yourself too fast, you, you'll just die. And. Like they've they've got the timer and you spend too long in the level, then the ghost comes and tries to kill you. And so I'm <laughs> rushing through and doing stupid shit. And then I die. I'm like, ah, well, that's what I get for being fast. And then I try to go slow when I get killed by a ghost. That timer mechanic. Oh, come on. If you're going slow enough to get killed by a ghost, you're going more than slow. I was just about to say, I feel like ghost mechanic is an artificial scare that most of the time, you could take your time and not have to worry about that ghost. It works. It works because I get scared and I do stupid things. Uh, that was a close play. Yeah. Oh, I got excited there for a second. <laughs> but you had it. But no, I have no other games to talk about. So I, I, this is all you guys. So, so, like, I was a one-trick pony this week. Tom and I have something in common in that we both have tried uh, some challenge runs on Phasmophobia. Yep. So... <laughs> I've only done one challenge run so far and it was one of the easiest games of Phasmophobia I've ever played in my life. <laughs> the stars aligned oh. in this mess of a scenario. Um, so I was playing with Chewie. It was just the two of us. He randomly rolled a, a challenge from this list of challenges and the one we got was you cannot hide during a hunt and you can't be in like super close spaces. So like hiding in a closet or a locker or a small room or something was completely out of the picture. So we're like, Ooh. ah, crap. So we're on intermediate farmhouse. And um, we had the return of the phantom door. Uh, oh, no. From, oh, from told me about that. <laughs> so so uh, we were playing with Tom one day and the, the door that leads to outside, not the front door, but like the door in one of the, the rooms on the bordering wall of the, the house was just like gone for him. And we're playing through this, this map and we're looking for the ghost and the room and stuff. And that door glitches out. It's an outside facing door. It glitches out and guess where the ghost room was. Oh, really? The ghost, the ghost room just happened to be that room that had the glitched out uh, door in it. 
So we're basically just doing whatever we want with absolutely no risk because as soon as the hunt starts, we walk out that door outside and we wait for it to end. That's <laughs> so, cheesy as shit. So it just... <laughs> You know, the, the match we just happened to try a challenge. It happens to be the one where you can't hide, which also happens to be on the map with the glitch door. And the ghost room happened to be that room. It was the perfect storm of just like, what, challenge mode? Nah, dude, we're chilling. We, had, we both had zero sanity and we're trying to coax pictures out with absolutely no risk of dying because as soon as it starts, we just like mosey on out the door. Yeah, because as soon as a hunt starts, you get like, there's three, four seconds or something of like, it won't kill you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, so yeah, that was the easiest thing in the entire universe. Man, I haven't yeah. played that in a while. I, I got, I'm jonesing some phasmophobia tonight. I, like, I, I know people are asking about playing it tonight. So I'm in. Um, can, can I go ahead and say, you say you know people. We're talking about you, Chewy. You are people. <laughs> <laughs> Chewy wants to play tonight. I am into it. Let's go. Um, I say I love these challenges. Um, starting equipment only is a fantastic challenge, but we also had challenges that were super fucking annoying, but fundamentally changed how we played the game. Uh, one was you get three words that you can say before you hit the, the button to open the door to the truck. And we had to pre-pick our words. So we picked motherfucker, so we could piss off the ghost. We picked Elizabeth, which is the ghost's first name. And we picked this. So we could we could physically point to evidence, like, because I'm in VR and I have hands. I could do something like hold up the EMF reader, this, this. <laughs> and we so could we can find each other word. what we want. Yeah, I remember seeing that challenge on the list of challenges and think and like trying to figure out like what words would you pick? Because there's there's so much information that you need to convey and you can't just yeah. pick you can't just pick three random gadgets like okay so if we get ghost orbs you know one of the things we can say is orbs because there are more criteria than there are words to pick from so exactly that's that's a that's a pretty good way to do it should we um, spent like 10 minutes trying to tell me that we had ghost orbs <laughs> and he would point to the this. screen i'm like what do you want me to like sit here and wash this he's like this <laughs> and then this. I said, "Yeah, I know. We've got one in the room. Like, I, I, I have this. I know this is in the room." And like, even when he was trying to tell me where the room was, eventually I got it when he said, "Motherfucker, Elizabeth, this," and he started like <laughs> couching up and down in a single room. I'm just like, "Oh, the motherfucker Elizabeth is here." Got it. So, um, can someone please explain to Tom how that's not three words? I tried to do this okay. last night. Okay, motherfucker, we counted as one word. I know one motherfucker word. is two words, but we counted it as one word. That's it's also, it can be one word. Actually, we couldn't actually do spirit box until the game gave up and had it start talking to us because we couldn't ask questions. Motherfucker and this are not questions. <laughs> So do, it does eventually just like say something through it. If, uh, if don't voice ask? recognition fails, like there's a couple a couple ways that it'll just start talking without questions. Um, oh. If voice recognition fails, is one of them. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's like a timeout for it, but it did eventually start talking. Okay, that's good to know. If I remember correctly, but so uh, yeah, you, that was that was great. What you could do is sub the word this out for here, and then upper Elizabeth yeah. here. They may give you a squawk box for it. That's true. But yeah, so, uh, I, I, yeah. I want to get in on there for some challenges tonight. I think that'd I be a lot of fun. To, I need to see what other challenges we had. I'm looking for this list right now. Live podcasting. Um, okay. We had the social distancing challenge, which was fucking great, where we had to stay six feet apart um, if we were like in a large room, like a kitchen or the truck. But we couldn't stand, stay in any small rooms together, which is great when uh, you're getting spooked and the ghost is hunting and you're both running from it in the same direction. You can't hide in the same room or be close to each other, which ended up being fantastic and got us killed. Um, <laughs> let me see. Must always stay together. That was that was easy. There's um, um, default equipment only. 
I love the quick. Or uh, no we've flashlights. We've done that kind of stuff anyway, though. That one. Uh, one I thought was really fun was only one person allowed in the house at a time. And oh. then the inverse. At all times, the house must have everyone but one person in it. Yep. Chewie and I did but, the everybody has to be in the house except one person. Um, and that was terrifying because if you're getting hunted and you know shit's going down, I should leave this house. Fuck, Chewie's outside. Fuck. I guess you're not I'm allowed here. to be. Yep. <laughs> that sucks. It, that's awesome. I really like that. As well as some of the really rough ones, only holding one piece of equipment at a time. Oh my so if God. you're trying to take an actual <laughs> equipment, you have to leave your flashlight behind. Yeah. I do That's a like good one the, too. Uh, you have to bring everything that you brought inside back outside. <laughs> well, okay. Do you remember when we first started playing the game? We thought that's actually how the buying of equipment worked. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that, okay. This is true for a lot of games. The assumptions you make about the games and things you think are happening in the games when you first are playing them versus what's actually happening yeah. once you've come to understand the game. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a lot of games like that where it's like, oh, this thing's like listening to me. It's doing this and that. And all of a sudden you realize, oh, no, it's actually canned responses to this kind of criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I had some pretty funny ideas about Tarkov when I first started playing it. Because <laughs> I didn't understand shit in that game. Yeah. And like, well, I, honestly, I, that, that game in specific, um, a lot of players that have been playing a long time still don't understand things properly. There's a lot of little things. Well, Mm. Well, like I thought it was like an always live server and people just kept spawning in and out of it. Not the fact that there's like multiple servers and they just keep the same clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I was thinking of it initially more MMO -y, Which would have been, which would still I think be a lot of fun, but it'd be something completely different. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's no more such thing as a server wipe and PMCs are coming in all the time and it would make it a lot more dangerous. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, the only other thing I have to talk about on my list is that uh, I really am starting to appreciate late night gaming with voice chat. Uh, so, like, Counter-Strike. I'm sitting here. I'm I'm having a... I guess I should have put this in the, the food thing. I bought White Claw, so I'll get to that here in a minute. <laughs> um, but sitting oh, there, having a drink just chat with people who are all like adults in late twenties, early thirties, because the kiddies went to bed, uh, sooner than, than 2 a.m. That's ageist. It is, but you know, it's so <laughs> fucking nice to just have like an adult conversation about the kinds of cheese you have on a burger or whatever the fuck we were talking about. That was <laughs> just stupid without a bunch of kids screaming. It was nice. Wait, um, wait a snag that one, Adam. Hey, thanks. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I got White Claw. It's not good. I got not the good. mango one, which is clearly the best flavor from what I've been told. Uh, and it's still not good. It's not good. It tastes like carbonated hand sanitizer. Um, oh. <laughs> it's, it's coming from a guy who, who loves vodka. Like, I will drink vodka and gin just straight up. Um, but no, nah, no, nah, White Claw is carbonated hand sanitizer with just the slightest amount of. Is this mango or is this a chemical burn? Or is this mango, is this a stroke flavor? <laughs> so it's so uh, I've actually so it's I've LaCroix actually had... it's LaCroix mixed with hand sanitizer. Uh yeah, but like I really like LaCroix. I, I do too. love I love carbonated water. Like even non flavored, straight up just sparkling water. Love that shit. Cannot get into the bullshit that is white claw. But Tom I'm the claw is the it. law. I'm not glad I have it. So I've never had Claw. I've never had Tulis or whatever the other big thing or, or a popular one is. But mm. I've had one seltzer and I actually kind of enjoyed it. And it was mind blowing to me what it was. Natural light strawberry seltzer. Ooh. It was pretty good. And being okay. a natty product, it really shocked me that it was good. But had it uh, during the summer. It was nice. It was refreshing. It was. I, I dug it. All right. Um, yeah, I like. But I like fruity drinks too, though. Like I love my ciders. 
Yeah. So like the idea of having a not as sweet, still fruit kind of beerish kind of thing. Yeah, I'm down. I like that. I love that concept. I I like my IPAs, but sometimes I don't feel like having hot madness or like a fucking coffee flavored stout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I am never going to never going to judge someone on having tasty drinks. Like, okay, Sex on the beach, fuzzy navel. Oh, they're girly drinks. Yeah, they're fucking delicious. They don't taste like carbonated bread. It's called efficiency, how Brad. How bad is your life if you get upset because someone else is having a tasty drink? Exactly. <laughs> fuck yourself. Let, people Let, people enjoy enjoy. Let people enjoy things. Let people enjoy things, please. You, you know what this is? You know what this is? This goes for music, <laughs> movies, TV shows, beverages, food. Generic ginger ale and whiskey. Rye whiskey. Now, now, I might it. look at you strange if you're mixing, like, $500 bottle scotch no. with Coke. I might look at you strange, but if you got the money to do it. Go ahead and fucking yeah. do it. <laughs> I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> What'd you say, Tom? You say it's this Woodford's? Is- yeah. Yeah. Nice. Ah. Anyway. Um, I, start, I, start, I started to get back into Tarkov a little more. So, for oh, the nice. past... Oh, I- for the past like three or four weeks, I just haven't. I've launched Tarkov like twice a day, every day, but I haven't <laughs> actually played the game. I haven't gotten into a raid in probably three or four weeks. I've just been doing stuff within the hideout and collecting my free passive income through the Bitcoin farm and basically doing the scav case loot box thing. So is Tarkov uh, your mobile game? Yeah. Um, not not Sorry. paid loot box like real money loot box. It's in game money, yeah. basically gambling. But um, I mean, do you have a laptop so you can poop and play? I mean, if you can't do that, it's not a mobile game. I do not have a laptop, so that's off the cool. that's off the table. And even if I did, it wouldn't be good enough to run the game properly anyway. <laughs> um, like Shadow Play or Parsec on your phone, and then yeah, you can do all that stuff on the pooper. Nice, I'll consider it. Uh, but no, I just, for like the past three weeks, every time I launch the game, I'm just like, I don't really feel like doing all that. Because Tarkov is a lot. It's, it it's, is. It, yes. takes some, it takes some mental fortitude. And sometimes I just don't have the energy to deal with it. So for like three weeks, I haven't played. I've just been collecting stuff. And I've like, I've gotten up to 30 million rubles. Nice. So I finally... Um, the other day, I was just like, "All right, I'm just gonna play a couple raids. I'm just gonna play," and I had a lot of fun. And I played a bunch today. Had a lot of fun. I got to level 40, which means I have all the traders leveled up all the way now. Um, nice. So like, the game has really opened up, and I'm finally done with enough tasks to get all the traders leveled, so that I basically I'm at a point where I have enough money I can just play however, do whatever with whatever kind of guns I want to run, whatever kind of armor I want to run. I can just I can just play without having to worry about like accomplishing Isn't specific sad. things with specific equipment. I, I, I get the kind of game Tarkov is, and I enjoy the fact it's like that. But I think there's something to be said that you need to play for a good 50 hours probably plus to get to the point where you can play how you want to play. It is a true well, lifestyle. No, game. not play how you want to play the whole time. Like when, when Tarkov resets Gear and you start wise. from the beginning, I want to be playing how you have to play in the beginning. Like, I enjoy when everybody has, you know, a bunch of random gear that isn't, you know, top-level stuff. But there is a point where the game kind of, it, like, transitions into the end game for that player specifically. To where you can, you have the option to play however you want without having to stress about it too much. You just have to, you know, do the Tarkov things and... uh, you know, not die enough so that you can maintain your personal economy. But beyond that, you're not really pressured to do any one specific thing. Whereas yeah. before that, that stage of the game, you're basically, you have to do your, the tasks because that's how you get all your XP so that you can level up your traders so that you can buy equipment for not inflated flea market prices and stuff. Like there's a, there's a very, very solid sense of progression uh, because there's so much to do and so much to like level up and the hideout and the traders and all of that kind of stuff. And then you get to this end point and it's just so nice to like 
It's, it's, it's almost like playing a different game at that point. I don't know. It's just it's just been really I've nice. Never I've, had, I've been having fun. I've been having fun um, just playing again. It's been nice. Had some good rates that's today, good. too. That's I, good. I saw you hit 40, and that's the point when you can uh, max out all the vendors, right? Yeah. At level 40, you, all the vendors are maxed out. You get your uh, thick uh, weapons case. So I opened up some stash space, too, uh, doing that. And yeah, uh, with, the, nice. with the level four traders, a lot of the equipment is cheaper, so I can run pretty pretty nice stuff without breaking the bank as much. Which is nice. Yeah. Like I remember uh, you you brought me in a build, and I was saving off the build, and like shit, this cost me almost two hundred thousand to rebuild. He's like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> like, it was no. that, there was a piece. There was a piece you could buy for four thousand that it cost me like forty five thousand to get on the mm -hmm. fucking yeah market. Yeah. Yeah, that's the so any any part like weapon part that's the meta part the best in slot like if if you're running the absolute top tier version of this gun it has to have this part um, and usually those parts are blocked behind level four traders so people will put them up on the flea market for a lot of money because the only way people are going to get them is through that flea market because they don't have the trader leveled up yet so you get these like super inflated prices on like the the meta attachments for the guns and stuff. Yeah. And I, I kind of like it because it's rewarding then because when you find that, because the only way you can put stuff on the market is if you find it in raid. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of rewarding. It's like, oh shit, I just found this grip. I know this grip goes for a lot of money and all of a sudden it goes from, oh, whatever. And like, I, I want to get this out. This is a nice item to have. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an added, other than just killing people, it gives you a good loot sense for mm -hmm. when you're in a map. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. looking to looking forward to playing more. Uh, Tom, um, any other games you want to hit off? What you got? No, no, that's really all I've got here. All right, in that case, um, let's shoot on down to some news, shall we? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Um, first one we got: Mass Effect Legendary Edition is going to uh, drop next year, and it's going to be the original trilogy. Oh my is, god, I'm so fucking excited. So what is Legendary Edition? So it's basically all three games, 120 hours at least of gameplay in one package. Didn't they already do uh, that? They did a complete pack, but uh, this is going to have, like, it's going to be prettier. Uh, it's probably going to have way more DLC. It's going to charge you a whole lot more money for the same content that you already own. Uh, and I'm <laughs> going to buy this... As soon as it comes out, day one, no reviews, because Pretty I'm a fucking idiot. Prettier? Are they doing like a remastered version of the first one or something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're they're remastering everything, all of the original oh, trilogy. Okay. Which, so this uh, would be the good time for me next year to say, you know what, finally time I play Mass Effect? Exactly. And actually, uh, Renee said the exact same thing. She said, hey, I'm probably just going to wait to play Mass Effect then. Um, it's... Mass Effect is fucking great. It's just it's, fucking great. It's one of those games I have no doubt I'm going to enjoy when I finally get to it, but I've never really does, had a huge yeah. pull where it's like, I need to get to it. It does seem like yeah. an irk game for sure. I tried... I actually hated Mass Effect the first time I played it. Because um, the first game, I went into it expecting a KOTOR-style standard Bioware game. And instead what I got was a third person shooter that wasn't really great. Like it was fine, but honestly kind of shitty uh, with an RPG system that was mostly forgettable that you could ignore for the whole game. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. So after a couple hours, I stopped playing. Uh, I eventually picked it back up a second time and got really, really into it. So played 60 hours of that, then bought two, then played 60 hours of that then bought three, then played 60 hours of that, and then I did it all over again in a week. Um, <laughs> Jesus. It is so fucking good. Um, I I cannot say enough about that franchise, or about the so, trilogy, I should say. So, admittedly, I hadn't looked at this news item. So, when they are doing three, if I remember right, well, I mean, I know this for sure. People, there's a lot of bitch fest around the ending of three. And if I remember right, they actually change. I don't want to change may not be the right word. They did something to where like there was a different ending in three. 
So the original ending was a. I'm not gonna Cop spoil out. it. Um, it it was basically, oh here's all this build up, here's all this build up, here's all this build up, and oh hey it just ended. Yeah, uh yeah you, you picked, you picked this one of these options and your game is over and that's it. Like none of the all the characters that you have spent 180 hours getting to know, talking to. You know, living and dying next to, mourning over shared comrades who have fallen in battle, given their lives to save the world or the universe. Um, and the game just ends without any kind of fanfare regarding those relationships. And it really fucking sucked um, because the ending was absolutely rushed. And the whole reason that the ending still today, even in the revised edition, doesn't feel quite good is because it got leaked. The original ending got leaked, so it had to get changed within the last like quarter of development, oh, and it fucked up on. the entire thing. Yeah, um, which still pisses me off because from the stuff that leaked, it looked like yeah, the OG ending was going to be fucking fantastic. I don't know why you let a leak stop you. Yeah, it's not going to be a surprise to the people who have read it, but if you've got not, a good thing, yeah, change it. Not everybody that plays your game will have read that leak anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's like well, the last from my... two, right? Like, people are like, oh, no, I saw the leaks. I don't need to play the game. Well, no, not really. There's still a whole lot of subtext and reading between the lines you're missing by not playing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just remember people saying that the ending of 3 was, like, very non-consequential for, you, for your decisions. Exactly. And so the thing that they added was this part near the ending of the game. Like, not perfectly at the ending, but kind of sort of near it, where you see all your teammates again... And you have kind of the the conversations that you have when you expect somebody to die soon, right? Like, hey, guys, we're getting into this. You know, hey, remember that time when we did that thing and threw beer bottles off the bridge at the Citadel while you sniped them out of the air? That was cool. <laughs> um, and you have, you have a lot of nice conversations, and it gives you a little bit of extra closure. The ending itself is still dog shit. It's still a... <sighs> a very simple ending for all of the stuff you put into it, uh, which is unfortunate, but having that amount of closure did help a bit. It's better. It's still not good. <laughs> right. Do you can but enjoy anyway, everything I, leading up to it. Exactly. Don't, don't let that put you off of mass effect as a series. Like it's, this is absolutely a journey game and not a destination game. Um, I'd, it would be hard to make an ending that really felt appropriate for mm. 180 hours of continuous gameplay. Cool. And by the way, keep in mind that Mass Effect 1, the save file, leads into Mass Effect 2, which leads into Mass Effect 3. Um, so decisions that you have made in the very first game, yeah, at the end of 3, you'll actually encounter what you thought was a super inconsequential choice directly affects the ending of the game, which is well, that pretty interesting. Well, and that's where I think people got upset where it was a game built so much off of choices where in the end it felt like it came down. Ah, I won't get into too much. Yeah, either way, yeah. it drops yeah. next year. Um, I'll be able to speak more accurately to all what I'm saying because at that point I would have played it rather than just talking to friends. Um, <laughs> so what we got next. Square Enix reported a 6.5 billion yen loss for their HD games uh, driven by the Marvel Avengers. So in other words, the Marvel Avengers debacle has cost them a lot of money. Um, I'm upset that we have it in yen because I don't know the transition or translation. Um, it's it's a bit. Usually, usually 100 yen is a buck. Um, it's not a perfect translation because, you know, money markets and all that stuff. But well, uh, roughly yeah. a 60 million dollar loss then. Yeah. That's um, a fuck ton of money. So they didn't they didn't exactly say how many sales numbers or how their projections ended up shaking out. But um, from the estimations, it looks like they're hitting about 60 percent of what they expected. Frankly, I'm surprised it's that high. If they're hitting 60 percent of what they're expecting and they're still losing that much. Like yeah. they expected to lose money. Well, I guess it's a lifestyle game. So you lose it up front, you yeah. gain it on the back end. Kind of like the console blueprint where typically consoles sell at a loss and then they make up the money in the game licensing. Exactly. Um, but yeah, um, so that's a thing. 
Uh, we've touched on this game being a shit show for a while, and it continues. Um, another news, Take Two Interactive is to buy the dev house of Codemasters. Um, came in just under a billion. Correct Code me if I'm wrong. It's, they just do racing, right? No, no. So, co okay, so today, yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, but Codemasters was a dev house back in like the NES era and before. Uh, Codemasters has been around forever. Oh, uh, so seeing them getting uh, get eaten, uh, it's kind of kind of bittersweet for me. Like I'm I'm glad that they're not shuttered or, or closing down. But I don't know, man. I still have NES games sitting on my shelf right now that has the Codemasters logo come up with a little <laughs> ding. Um, <laughs> It's, it's kind of weird. But yeah, dev houses get bought. It's, it's what happens. It's how they survive. Because especially yeah. once you become obscure, if you don't get consumed, you're, you're kind of toast. And we've seen that with a lot of devs, and we've also seen it with non ones that did get bought up also go down. So anyway. Yeah. Um, so let's just go to the next, because unless there's something else you wanted to add from no, your nostalgia no, that's, base. That's really it. That's really it. Um, so Fall Guys is adding an OnlyFans level. Um, <laughs> oh. I, I love like I love what they do with like how little shits they give about certain things. Like yeah. they are a they're a Devolver game through and through. Like they they fit that publishing house. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if, I had to put it on there because just the title. But they're making a level where it's nothing but fucking fans, and you have to get across the level, which will be interesting. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the, the game's numbers have been falling, and that's to be expected, but I think enough people, it's hit a saturation point to where they're just going to keep releasing content because people are there still. People will still play yeah, it. For sure. But, yeah, Season 2's got about a month left, I think, and then we'll see what they do with Season 3. Hopefully they bring in more new maps because they didn't bring in enough for Season 2, IMO. Yeah. Um, Kind of sad news, good news, I don't know who news. Uh, Kerbal the Kerbal 2 has been pushed to at least 2022 currently. Like, they really pushed that fucker out. Yeah, they they have had... The Kerbal Space Program team has been dealt kind of a shit hand. That game has been in development hell for a while now. It's crazy to me to see a delay and not see it labeled within the next calendar year. Yeah. yeah like, at that point, delay. don't put it... Don't put any kind of a date. To yeah. say we are yeah. no longer confident in putting a date on this game, we will let you know when it's out. I mean, if you have shareholders saying something like that, it's code for this is going to be canceled. Mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of games who have said, yeah, we're, we're delaying this indefinitely. Uh, no release date. And like most of those just never see the light of day ever. Yeah, but most of those also like they full on stop development. That's true. Like, um, look at um, Scale Down for the what was supposed to be an Xbox Series X release. Like, that game never saw the light of day. They removed its date. They stopped development. It just died. Yeah. I don't think that this is going to be that because this is the only game they got. So if this game doesn't come out, that effectively means they shuttered. Because they have Take-Two as a publisher, but correct me if I'm wrong, I still think they're an, indiv or an individual dev house. Um, I thought that changed recently. At the very least, uh, there was a lot of drama with the original Kerbal team actually yes. leaving. I think they got picked up by Valve, and then uh, I don't think they actually worked out at Valve. Oh, see, I, I thought, thought they, they like, were up. Uh, I thought they were under Take Two for publishing, so I didn't know if like um, they ended up. Oh, so so the the name of the team, the company behind it, um, got taken into Take Two. But the actual original devs, uh, I want to oh, say, left in okay. a huff, and they got picked up by Valve, and then got fired, and like there's, it's a lot of fucking drama. Yeah, there there was a shit show around that entire development staff. Well, not necessarily the staff, but the management and such. But yeah, yeah. Burbfeng asked, "Is Star Citizen going to release sometime before 2077?" No, <laughs> Star Citizen will not release because it's a Ponzi scheme and not a video game. Like by, okay, by the time Star it's Citizen not... releases, we'll all be flying around in the spaceships like Star Citizen. <laughs> to the point, we'll say, "What's this game based off of?" Um, <laughs> like, okay, fuck. No Star news. Citizen. We'll talk about this. 
Star Citizen is probably the highest hype game I've ever heard of that fall, fell into obscurity and still has a cult peop, or following of people saying it's going to happen. How, how uh, I know people, I know motherfuckers who have dropped hundreds of dollars on a non existent game. Well, did they have playable sections? No, no, it's not playable. It was playable, but the most recent iteration just crashes on boot or when you enter certain doors. Like, it is not playable right now. It was at one point in time. But well, and it wasn't even, it wasn't playable as a full game either. I want to no, state this no. it's never been playable as a full game. No, like it's this. Always been this this is as earliest of access possible. Like, this is an obscenely early access game since probably, what, like 2009 was the first time they had anything kind of playable? Yeah. 2010, maybe, somewhere in that range? And like, it's stupid. People have weird expectations because they're like, oh, look, they put VR on the roadmap. And the <laughs> game today on a flat screen 1080p running on medium graphics still gets 24 frames per second. Like... <laughs> How on fucking earth do you expect them to put this in a VR headset that requires a minimum of 90 running at 2K resolution at least per eye? So you're doubling well, that. Well, don't worry. That's just what it runs at now. When it releases in 30 years, it'll be like at 120 frames. <laughs> so is this just a classic case of a developer completely not understanding uh, scope? Scope. Yep. It's, it I mean, no, they understand it. They understand the scope perfectly. And the thing they keep saying is, yeah, this isn't going to come out for a long time. But, hey, what you can do is you can get yourself a place in line by buying this $200 Starship. <laughs> we got you, buddy. We fucking well, got you. Yeah, I, mean, it's I not, guess it's right. Not necessarily it's not, not understanding scope, but just understanding a scope that is way too large for any kind of realistic development period. They embrace the scopes. The they scope they they intentionally have said this is the most ambitious game ever to be made. Yeah. Like they understand what they're going for is like a ludic ludicrous. Mm -hmm. And it's, the difference they're still is, willing to like, give it the old college try. It's yeah. never coming out. Like okay, what No Man's Sky delivered versus what they promised. Like the scope of this compared to No Man's Sky is absurd. Like No Man's Sky looks like an NES game in current era compared to what this game's promising. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just never going to happen. Yeah, nah. I yeah. I it's it, I'm I realize that I said at the beginning of this of this show, let people enjoy things, but you are literally the people spending money on Star Citizen are literally throwing money at a non-existent product and hoping it pays off. This isn't like a Kickstarter thing where they're like, oh no, we we might release. Or you might get it. Like, it's not like you're taking an informed bet. These developers are promising you a full game. You are paying hundreds of dollars to get a non-existent starship on a game that might not ever come out. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's rough. I, <laughs> That's really rough. It's a stupid gamble. I'm just going to say that. It's a really dumb thing to gamble with. Play oh, my. Stuff, I just read the new, next new item for the news item for the first time. Uh, the source code for Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs Legion source code. This is what happens when I'm prepared. Was leaked. <laughs> 560 gigs of source code. Now, let this be known. That does not mean this is the size of the game that ships. But no. that is an obscene <laughs> code base. That is a like, lot that of data. It's not just code. Well, it's also image and assets and stuff. Yes, this is all assets. Like but the that's source, code, the source sure code is, is like... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a gig. It's, what I'm saying is, I mean, like, the, what's going to get pushed? Yeah. Like, this isn't, like, final compressed size, but that is absurdly large. Yeah. I guess like, I, I was just reading the most recent uh, Call of Duty was supposed to be close to 200 gigs, and they recently just compacted it down to, like, 82 or something. <laughs> That's still a lot, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I this guess. is in the era of data caps... Like that makes games unpurchasable sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. But five six. Like, you know, I, I guess I didn't realize. I didn't realize how much compression went into the assets. Oh yeah. To take oh, five sixty yeah. all the way down to you know, whatever it ends up being. You well, got it's not, to. It's not just compression. Like you know, you have original textures at what eight K, twelve K, and then you chunk them down to okay, well, to make this run on a console, we need this to be five twelve. Uh, or we need this to be, you know, uh, 1024 uh, bit textures. 
or we need this to be, you know, looking decent at a 720p screen. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not shipping the originals. They're shipping what will run on that platform. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I guess but in any, for PC, in any media though, product, you you wouldn't ship the original. Size even even and on PC, anyway, you but... wouldn't ship 8K textures, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you ship 4K Hopefully. if you're as big as Activision. Hopefully. Um, so if nobody's yeah, ever going to be running 8K textures, why do they? Because they can put out Dev Watch Dogs them. Legion Remastered 2 without <laughs> doing a whole bunch of work. It's, yeah. it's super smart to keep super high resolution originals available. Mm. Um, because, you know, just in case. And if, if something looks particularly muddy or if you lose a lot of detail, you can selectively say, okay, this thing is going to have higher textures. Mm. This one object or this character model. Um, because, right, like... Your your NPCs who are in the boat in the very back of Spider-Man for the PS4, their texture resolution is like 128 by 128. You don't need shit for that. But mm -hmm. the suit going on to Miles Morales, you bet your ass that's going to be a 4K texture regardless of whatever platform it's run on. Yeah, It's got to look crisp. Then I guess thinking about it again, if you have a really high high quality original and then compress it down, it still might look better than you know, the compressed down size, if that was your starting point without exactly. compression. Yeah. Like filming, filming in 4k tricky. and, and downscaling to 1080p might look better than just filming at 1080p. Yeah. Also, can I mention that I have beef with watchdogs Legion? I saw Why? a commercial for it and they're like, Oh, it's, it's the greatest game ever. It won like 75 pre E3 awards. <laughs> and literally won awards for the trailer that they, that they showed at E3 Digital this year. Um, but they, they're trying to pass it off. It's, oh, look, it won so many awards. It's it's the greatest game ever. No, no, you just made a really slick trailer, dog. But you don't want people to know that shit. Mm -hmm. So Watch Dogs, from my recollection, has always just been, you know, it's a fun little franchise. It's nothing Why ever like, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. It's just, yeah, this is a good game. One was a trash fire. Um, I actually played it. I got it for free with a graphics card. Hey. Um, so, uh, first mission, I get in a car. I drive for a little bit. I'm trying to evade the police, and my car literally falls through the road and into an endless sprawling ocean underneath me. So I'm like, okay, well, it's Ubisoft. Let's give this another go. I load it up again. I'm driving across a bridge, and the bridge literally disappears. And then it teleports me outside of the boundaries to where two trains without collision just pass through each other. Like the tracks are literally overlaid in an X on top of each other and they run right through each other. <laughs> and then my car falls through the bridge, which apparently never existed in the first place and into the ocean again. And that's when I stopped playing. That's so, a wild ride. <laughs> all that shit. <laughs> that is a wild ride. I know uh, Watch Dogs 2. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people really like Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. I never did play it. It's of them. a typical if you like the Ubisoft open world formula and you want a uh, uh, like pseudo shitty hacker aesthetic overlaid on top of that, uh, sure, Watch Dogs 2 is great. Oh, I played a shitty play and it didn't work. Um but yeah, so uh, Watch Dogs 2, big fucking assets. Uh um, Watch Dogs Legion, big fucking assets. Legion. Yep, thank you. Yeah, they're, they're retrofitting it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so um Activision Blizzard made a one point two million or billion with a B dollars for microtransactions billion. in just three months. Yep. So uh gamers always like to complain about microtransactions. They hate them. Why do companies even have them? Uh if they're listening to us, why do they have microtransactions? And it's because they work. They work. <laughs> they have yeah. they make an ungodly <laughs> would... amount of money. Yeah. Well, and I do want to call out this includes this includes Warzone, which is a free game. And on free games, you I feel that you need to embrace microtransactions on free games. Yeah. Yeah, if you want a free game that lasts and has good servers and you know, constantly evolving and expanding content, oh, like somebody's gotta me. make some money Counter somewhere. Right. Excuse me. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh god, sorry, I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, that last one was a weak example though i think that one's finally dying yeah well, i shouldn't say finally and it's been dying to death for the last decade but but yeah uh, that's a lot of oh god it keeps going 
Oh, Jesus. But yeah, that, that's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. Yep. Like, so next time you com- complain about microtransactions, read some financials first. Fuck microtransactions, then, by the way. And then finally, um, last bit of news. Phasmophobia devs reconsidering their early access strategy yep. after having such huge success. Apparently, um, the, the dev said, yeah, um, my plan for early access was to put out like a couple more pieces of equipment, maybe a few new ghosts and uh, call it there. I can't do that now. <laughs> and I want to be clear. I would have been satisfied with that. I think that that was a yeah. perfect plan. Yeah. yeah, it was Yeah, it was a great plan. But when it's blown up and become as successful as it is, there's a... I'm sure there's a lot of pressure and a lot of, you know, feelings of obligation to, to make it, you know, bigger and better. Okay. The, so the I, dev, I don't still, want single dev, one person yes. building. Um, and I, and... I don't, I don't want to put money figures to this, but just let this known single dev, 2 million units sold on steam. One dude. Yep. Fuck, uh, congratulations, every, dude. <laughs> every fucking ounce of success he has right now. Uh, he made a product that is fun. It is instantly enjoyable with people. It's the only VR or uh, multiplayer horror game that's actually spooky. Uh, yeah. Um, so, and, and, and equal parts board, funny. <laughs> the, the public Trello okay. board, which this dev is doing all the stuff in the open. It has a PvP mode listed. It has a PvP no, mode. No, no, no. Okay, okay. I'm going to stop you. Breaks, breaks, breaks. Oh, my God. Okay. Breaks. So let's unload. Let, there's a lot to unpack in that <laughs> rant that Tom just went on. <laughs> First off, for all of you non-highly technical people, and that's a lot of you because most people don't use this shit, Trello is what they call like a task board, a Kanban board. What it is is you have all these little objectives that you want to accomplish in your game so it'd be stuff like add a new type of equipment and you would have the equipment name add a new type of ghost and you would have different steps like i'm designing it i'm developing it i'm implementing it and then you would have like oh this bug popped up so you would add a little square on the board to represent that bug Mm -hmm. what this does is allows people to see your development plan actually as you're developing so they can see everything that you're planning to do and where it is in development, which is really nice. Yeah, it's really now, useful for multi-dev teams where so everybody always knows what what needs done, who's working on what, and at what stage of that progress are they on that thing. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's like a it's like a message board basically almost. Yes, it's it's fantastic so for see, that kind of thing. You can see the sticky note of like um, uh, design ghost model. Mm-hmm. Right. So they have to like actually model it up, like have the, the artist go through and build that. And you can see it move from like planned, started, halfway done, finished. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can actually see the, the progress of the development, which is really cool. But they've built so, the PvP okay. mode. No, stop, no, stop. I wasn't stop done it. unpacking. <laughs> so Tom didn't read his own news article. So <laughs> at the very end of this, they point out that he put a PvP mode on that board just to mess with people. It's oh, not actually you. intended to be done because he feels that inter- or introducing a PvP mode would change fundamentally the way the game is played. So he doesn't want that. Yeah. I, I, I can't that think. Of, I can't think of a way by... in which a PvP mode would be viable within the that game. It would be a completely different game. So I did read this. I took this, this as phasmophobia. to solidify the single, like the, the player versus AI modes, the PvE modes first. And once we get that down to a mirror shine, then we'll look at PvP and how that's done. That's how I took I, that statement. I took that statement as that's not what this game is. I just put it out there for fun. Uh, now, there is something important. This Trello board does have record sound effects listed in the to-do category. So, if you're a fan of Phasmophobia and sound effects, they're coming. Okay. Yeah. Also, um, fo- this is for Phasmophobia. Chewy, just call it out. I, we may have skipped over that. Um, I was talking to Adam about this. He's had great success. I'm not going to try to assume what his financials are. He, sh- I'm, You would think he has a little bit of money from this. I would wish and hope to God he brings in a couple devs because with as ambitious as he's wanting to potentially get with this, one dev won't scale in this kind of game. Stardew was a different animal. People point to Stardew as a single dev guy. 
that game didn't have the systems at play that this kind yeah. of game does. There, it's this night and day. day. Not to shit on what Stardew did, but it's two totally different types of games. Mm-hmm. Also, backlog. Make a prison level. Make an apartment building. Make a mansion level. Yep. Prison oh, level. Definitely. So, yeah. like, they did great. Prison would be scary. Prison would be really They did scary. great on Asylum. I just... Yeah. I think Asylum could be tweaked just a tad, I would like but it's a I would like level. a mini Asylum. Yes. Yeah. Like or, or just like a, a straight up like hospital would be cool too. Yes. Oh my god! On the to do list, make the ghost interact with objects during its hunting phase. Imagine the ghost. You can hear the footsteps oh, behind you. Shoot, it starts shoot. throwing shit <laughs> off like picture frames oh, off the walls. Oh man! And yeah. Like, everywhere. God damn, I'm excited. Just, just imagine, like, that could be a new thing that happens in a haunt. Like, he hits you with an object, and it not, like, <laughs> you have to stumble and get back up. Oh, Jesus. Though You couldn't do that with VR, though, because that could be a you little could. disorienting. You could. So if the run speed is as slow as it is, what is the pick yourself back up off the floor speed? Because, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, distance but... screams for outside and things in the windows of other houses. No, thank you. So, just, I, I don't want to break down everything as planned, but the, the point is, he has a public Trello bo- board where you can see what he's looking to do. Mm-hmm. This dude has great ambitions. I wish him the best. I hope he gets it. This game is fantastic, and I'm thrilled for his success. For the love of God, get you a small dev team, though. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing we'd want is for him to burn out trying to get all this exactly. stuff done by himself. Agreed. And I would rather this come slow, methodically, and well thought out then rushed and you break some of the core game that people are enjoying as it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so um, from what he said, his, his priorities are is number one is fixing all the big bugs. Uh, once he gets this game to a super stable place, uh, refactor some of the code base to make expansions easier. Then we're going to start seeing larger content packs of, you know, new ghosts, new equipment, new levels, stuff like that. But for initially, just expect the game to get more stable over time. Yeah, and Which uh, something a fantastic priority. Well, and getting it refactored, what that allows is yes, you're not going to get content for say three months, but if he gets the refactor right, when the content starts to come, content can just start popping. Yeah, because yep. if you get the refactor proper, it could just be plug and play on maps. It could be plug and play on new ghost types. It could be plug and play with new equipment. Mm-hmm. And honestly, uh, a little bit of a window between now and when new content starts coming out. Um, that might be the perfect amount of time for people to stop playing and then kind of refresh themselves once the new content actually content comes out. Like it's a, it's yeah. a nice break for the people who have played a lot. Um, <clears throat> not me, definitely not me. Uh, haven't played that much of it at all. No, um, no, not just a little bit, a slight amount, really. But, but yeah, but, I'm sure but, a lot of people are ready for a break. And after three months and new content comes out, I you know I'm gonna be excited to play it again. Uh, so that's a two-sided coin, though, because you also have, I think, what's happened with No Man's Sky with a lot of us, where we really enjoyed the game. We always intended to get back and check out some of that new content, yeah, no, but we, yeah. we just never have. Whereas if that's that content true. came out, say, like a, not, like a month after the last time we was playing, maybe we would have stuck around a little more, mm-hmm. knowing, hey, I'm going to build up this base a little more because there's this new update coming here soon. Or like, hey, I'm going to get some extra money because I know that there's a new item dropping next week and I want to make sure I have enough to max it out kind of thing. Mm. Makes sense. But Hopefully they can either way, balance that in a way that works. Yeah, and I, I feel this, but more to your point, this is a game you can easily pop in and out of, unlike No Man's Sky, which definitely takes a baseline to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, all right, um, that's the last thing we had. Uh, you fellas got anything else you want to add? Um, I'm never ready for this question every single week. I mean, it's not like, like you it's a new it, question. You ask it every week, and I completely forget that that's a thing. So we get to this point in the podcast, and I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Let's just awkwardly think about it for a second, and then you can do the rundown. So do the rundown. All right. So let's do the rundown. But before we do the rundown, I, not, not these two gents, myself, I need to apologize to people because I have been out of it i have been funky and it has been an off few weeks plays of the day have suffered youtube clips have suffered it's going to get back tomorrow's back to the normal routine everything's going to be back to the flow i left for a week i came back on call hit a lot of weird shit but it's back have no fear 
We're going to have a top plays montage for you next week. It's all going to be good. So back to I the 72 PC, you know. What was that? I have some fear. Have no fear. Fear? It's me. No. Yeah, anyway. Was a good the only fear you're allowed to have is during our Phasmophobia games. Yes, Agreed. which is... Which I'll probably be streaming slightly after the end of this cast. But let's that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a rundown. So for those of you watching us on Twitch, awesome. But we have YouTube where we put clips of the podcast. We put some other small videos and all that kind of stuff. And we're trying to get some subs over there and get some viewer base. So, you know, go check out some of the clips. It's a lot easier than watching a fucking hour and a half to our podcast. That said, if you're over on our YouTube watching us right now, fucking love you. Thank you. But... We are live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can jump in Rocket League. You can jump in the chat. You can jump in both. So just come on over. It is the best way to watch us or listen to us. I promise. We also have a Twitter, 72PC underscore official. We're going to be giving you plays of the day there. We're going to give you team updates there, tournament updates. So just follow us. It's a good time. And then finally, we got a website, 72PinConnector.com. It's getting a facelift. But even as is today, it will get you everywhere we are. Um, and regardless where you find us, join our Discord. That is the place for 72 Pin Connector. Get in the Discord, get in the conversation, hang out with really cool people. All that said, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. So, all the things. All the things. So that's next it. week, game on. Bye, everybody. <laughs>